Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is show you an alternative way of distinguishing whether a turning point was a maximum stationary point or a minimum stationary point. And that method is by considering the second differential of y with respect to x. What we do is we look at the rate of change of gradient, that is d by dx of dy by dx. Let me explain. If we have a stationary point, we know that at a stationary point the gradient of the tangent is parallel to the x-axis and its gradient dy by dx is going to be equal to zero, whether it's a maximum or a minimum. The question is, if we look at the left-hand side of our stationary point, now for a maximum, if we take any point up through here, the gradient is positive. So if I was to take, say, something like this point here, and we were to draw a tangent to that point, let's say the gradient dy by dx, it's got to be a positive number, let's say it was 2, say. A point here, the gradient dy by dx might be 1, say. When we come over to the right of our stationary point for a maximum, we'll notice that the gradient is decreasing. Anything along here is going to have a negative gradient. So suppose we looked at this point here, for instance. The gradient of the tangent, dy by dx, might be negative 1. This point might be negative 2, and so on. Now, if it was, say, temperature, as we move from left to right, if we were looking at temperature and we said to someone, look, the temperature was 2 degrees, here say it was 1 degree, here it's 0 degrees, here minus 1, and now minus 2, you'd say that the temperature is decreasing. Well, because we're not talking about temperature but gradient, we can say that the gradient is decreasing. And the measure of that is given by d by dx of the rate of change of gradient, d2y by dx squared. So if we were to work out what d2y by dx squared was, at this point here, by putting x into this function, if we found that it came out as a negative value, it would tell us that the rate of change of gradient is decreasing. It would imply that our stationary point was a maximum. Now we can take this argument again for a minimum. If we take a point to the left of the stationary point, let's say here, if we work out the gradient at any point on this side of the curve it's going to be negative. Let's say at this point it's given by dy by dx turns out to be, say, minus 2. This point, say, minus 1. Here we have our stationary point where the gradient is 0. Come around here, maybe at this point the gradient is now positive. Okay, It's bound to be positive all the way up through here, but let's say, say dy by dx turns out to be 1. Now again, if this was temperature as we were going from left to right, going from minus 2, say minus 1, naught, 1, 2, would say the temperature was increasing. But we're dealing with gradient, so we've got that the gradient is increasing. And this is given by the rate of change of gradient, which should be that d2y by dx squared is now going to be greater than 0 when you substitute your value for x at the stationary point into here. If it comes out greater than 0, it's going to mean that it's a min. Now, I'm going to work through an example to illustrate this, the, or these points for you. So, suppose we had, say, y equaled x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x minus 1. And we're asked to classify the stationary points on this curve. Well, first of all, we need to get those stationary points, so we need to differentiate. So we'd have dy by dx equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. And at stationary points, we would need to work out when dy by dx 
equals 0. And if dy by dx was equal to 0, we would therefore have that this equation here, 3x squared plus 6x minus 9, would equal 0. I notice that we could divide through by 3 on each term and we'd end up with x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And we can factorise this quadratic, a couple of brackets, and in those brackets we're going to have x plus 3 and x minus 1, and that's going to equal to 0. Each of these factors would have to equal 0, so that would lead to x equaling minus 3 or x equaling 1. So we've got our stationary points, the x coordinates, the stationary points. If we wanted the y coordinates, we just put the x values back in here and get the y coordinates. But we need to classify whether these stationary points are maximums or minimums. So to do this, by this method, what we need to do is to find d2y by dx squared. In other words, differentiate dy by dx with respect to x one more time. And if we do that for the first term, we're going to get 6x. And if we differentiate the 6x with respect to x, we get plus 6. We now test the value of dy by dx. Is it going to be positive? Is it going to be negative when we put x equals minus 3 through it? So if we were to say when x equals minus 3, we have d2y by dx squared is going to equal, well, 6 times minus 3 is minus 18, plus 6 is minus 12. And this is negative, less than 0, so therefore at this point where x is minus 3, what we've got is a maximum. Okay, so that's the first example here d2y dx squared is a negative number, that means the gradient is decreasing, which is what you get when you have a maximum. Okay, when we have x is 1, when x is 1, just put that through, we have d2y by dx squared is going to equal 6 times 1 plus 6 is going to come out at 12, which is clearly a positive number, greater than 0, so therefore we have a min. Now, what I do need to stress though is that there are going to be occasions when you put your value of x into d2y by dx squared and it comes out as 0. Now if it comes out at 0 then this test is inconclusive. What you have to do is the first differential test which we discussed earlier, where you build up a table and you check the sign of dy by dx either side of your stationary point. Okay, because it might turn out to be a point of inflection, but on the same uh, hand, it could be a maximum, it could be a minimum. So if d2y by dx squared comes out to be zero, then it is inconclusive. Okay, well I hope you've been able to follow this method, and that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.